Hello, hello. Welcome. Good afternoon. Welcome to Singularity University's Global Summit. My name is Will Wiseman. I have the great privilege of being your host for the next three days. So it's really going to be an extraordinary gathering. We're so thrilled to have you here. So in the lead up to this event, I've been spending a lot of time thinking, you know, working on the curriculum, talking to speakers, talking to entrepreneurs, investors, and thinking about, you know, what has really transpired over this last year. And I was struck by so many of the things that we've talked about over the, you know, many years and certainly over the last year, things like advanced robotics or gene editing or AI or increases to the solar capacity, all these things that used to be future tense are now very much becoming part of our everyday. You know, these are very much part of the present tense and the speed at which they're happening is astounding. You know, we talk a lot about the exponential curve and about how deceiving and deceptive it can be. And man, it certainly feels to me like we are really in the middle of it. And I think really echoes why it's so important to bring this group together at least once a year. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. So one of the great things about my role here at SU is that I get to spend a lot of time kind of thinking about where the world's going. It, it happens kind of naturally as a result of putting on these events and talking to some of the folks that I mentioned previously. And one of the things that, uh, that's really hit me is that this is an extraordinary time. You know, I get to see these glimpses of where the world is going and this sense that there's really something pretty incredible that's coming down the path. It's going to take a lot of work, but this is a really magical time and critically important time, I think, for humanity. So every day we're getting to see some headlines of, uh, of some of those exciting things, these future technologies that are coming now into the present. I want to take you through a few of those. So we're seeing technology that's playing an incredibly important role in medicine and healthcare, and whether that's artificial intelligence that's doing a ridiculously good job of diagnosing skin cancers or liquid biopsies that are being used to detect cancers at the earliest days, at earliest stage, these things are really redefining what it means to practice medicine. We're seeing amazing innovations that are happening in transportation, you know, especially around autonomous vehicles, whether it's cars or buses, boats or planes, and with the energy sources that are powering them, right? We're seeing wind, electricity, hydrogen, and solutions that are not only bringing in you know, a really cool products and, and services to the, to the world now, but are also doing a really good job of helping our environment. We're also seeing to this point countries that are completely transforming their energy ecosystem, their, the infrastructure that they have in place. Uh, to me, that's one of the most exciting things about some, about some of the transformations that are taking place now. You see countries like Germany that earlier this year got 85% of their energy from renewables. And we're seeing on an increasing basis that some of these spot prices now, unsubsidized for renewables, are starting to best traditional coal and, and oil and gas. Super exciting, and I have to imagine that the, the time is not too distant where we're going to get to see countries being powered entirely by renewables. And I think that's, you know, an extraordinary advancement, and I'm really looking forward to that happening. Uh, we're also seeing new currencies, whether it's, and, and infrastructure actually in place. So whether it's uh, Ether and Ethereum or Bitcoin and blockchain, you know, completely redefining what, is, what does it mean? What does money look like? What does commerce look like? We see robots that are continuing to astound and amaze us in capabilities with everything from providing personal care to people to construction to delivery and more. I think one of the most exciting and certainly visually one of the most fun areas for us to get to, get to explore. And we're also seeing some of the global grand challenges that have plagued us for eons that are now finally able to be addressed by technology. And so to see some of these GGCs disappearing uh, is really just incredibly exciting. And we're seeing that happen all the time. And what's also really exciting to me, a lot of excitement you can tell here, um, is that uh, now more than ever, I think what we're seeing kind of over and over again is that what is good for the world is really turning out to be good for business, right? So, so many of these solutions that are good for human beings and better for the planet, you know, they're actually turning out to be economically more attractive. And while our governments might not always be able to get out of the way or to help advocate some of these things, the sheer economic benefit is driving some of these things. So that's a very positive piece. Uh, and I would say technology kind of over and over again is showing this that greater opportunity and a better quality of life and that we can do all these things more economically are all possible as a result of technology. So 
It doesn't mean, though, that it's all going to be easy, right? And so I want to make sure that we do, hopefully, a very good job over these next few days talking about, you know, not only the really positive stuff that's happening, but let's be very realistic. I mean, there are a lot of, you know, risks that go along with these technologies. We know that there are bad actors out there, right? And so with every technology, they're looking for opportunities to exploit how they can use these things to their advantage. We also know that there's a lot of incumbents out there who have very significant economic interests that mean that they don't want to let go of some of the things that we know are you know, bad for the world and bad for the economy. And those are things we're going to have to work uh, against. And there's people who are just fearful, I think, of technology in general, some rightly and, and some, I think, not so rightly. And, uh, and those are things we're just going to have to, to work uh, and be aware of as we, we continue to kind of move things forward. So as technology rapidly transforms industries and institutions, there's clearly going to be winners and losers here. And I think you know, one of the key reasons we all get together here is to kind of talk about what does the world look like? How do we make sure that we're on the win column? And, uh, and we think one of the important ways um, that people can, can uh, increase the probability of them being successful and being a winner is uh, to really understand these accelerating technologies and to understand the new business models that are possible as a result of them. So we think to get in front of this and, and, uh, and, and be kind of on the front edge of, of innovation and kind of leading the way here, it's going to be really important for you to be thinking about the impact of elements like blockchain. You know, how does that affect how you interact with your customers and your suppliers? To be thinking about energy. You know, what happens is energy becomes cheaper and essentially ubiquitous. We're going to have Ramez Nam talking about that a little bit later on today. And thinking a lot about the three and a half billion new people who are going to be coming online and getting internet access for the first time over the coming decade. You know, all these incredible minds and, and a, a new base of people who I think will very much likely represent most of the major growth opportunities for, for business uh, over this coming decade. So SU exists to help move the world forward in a positive way. And, and part of that is really making sure that you're successful and you stay ahead of the curve. You know, we want to make sure that you're the disruptor, that you're not the disrupted, and that you don't end up on this slide here. We've seen Kodak you know, over and over again kind of heralded as the company you don't want to be. So hopefully, we'll set the stage here, help give you some things to think about that will help move you all forward. For those of you who are new to SU, I want to take just a few minutes to tell you a little bit about who we are. Uh, so SU was founded in 2008 by Ray Kurzweil and Peter Diamandis. Our mission is to educate, inspire, and empower leaders to apply accelerating technologies to address the world's grandest challenges and to create an abundant future for all. You can think of us as part think tank, part educator, and part accelerator or creator of new companies. So Peter and Ray came together at a TED conference. Uh, they were both speaking there. Ray had recently written a book called The Singularity is Near, and in it he had expanded upon some work he had done around accelerating technologies. Uh, and as they were talking, they both realized that they both had this opinion, this belief really, that the world was about to go through some extraordinary changes. Most people weren't talking about it, most people weren't aware of it, and there was really no place that people could come to to kind of prepare for that, right? To really understand where the world was going and to do it in a very broad way. And so the idea of Singularity University was born. Peter is the first half of our founding equation. I'm guessing many of you uh, are familiar with him. He is one of the most energetic and remarkable guys I've had a chance to interact with. Besides his role at SU, he is the author of Bold and Abundance. He is the chairman of XPRIZE. He's also the co-founder of Human Longevity, Planetary Resources, and Bold Capital. He's got his hands in a lot of really exciting things, and we're excited, that, uh, obviously, to have him here today um, in just a little bit. So you're going to hear us talk a lot about abundance, and that's this notion of things moving from scarcity, uh, where things are expensive, they're not readily accessible to everyone, to a world where, and driven by technology, things become much more readily available, much less expensive, and much more abundant. Um, it's really one of the most important contributions that Peter's made to SU, and I would say it's kind of the lens at which we look at the world, so the filter at which we kind of view everything, and kind of once you have that abundant mindset, I think it changes dramatically how you think about the world and how you think about opportunities in your own situation in it. 
One of the things I also love about Peter is that he thinks very, very big, right? And that he takes swings at problems that affect billions of people. And if you can solve a problem that affects a billion people, you've got a very nice opportunity or a good chance of creating a very big business. So that's something we also espouse here at SU. So Ray Kurzweil is the other half of our founding team. He's going to be joining us on Tuesday, which I'm really excited about. He, uh, besides his role as chancellor of SU, he is an inventor, he's an entrepreneur, he's an author, and he's also a director of engineering in Google, at Google. He is, as you know, a brilliant, brilliant technologist. And what's uh, really incredible about Ray is he is one of the most accurate futurists of all time. You probably ask yourself, like, how has he become so accurate? And the reason is because of his understanding ar around exponential growth. Uh, and he, he had this insight that more and more technologies were becoming information technologies. And that once something became an information technology, it started growing exponentially. And then once it started growing exponentially, you could all of a sudden start to extrapolate where it was going and start to make some uh, assumptions and predictions about the future. So he called this the law of accelerating returns, and he realized that understanding that would really give you incredible insights, and you could start to think about the, the future in a completely different way. So we're going to dive into that tech a little bit later on in the afternoon. Um, first of all, I just wanted to also share with you a little bit more about who we are as an organization. You know, our mission, our, our vision, our values, like what makes us tick. So we're a benefit corporation. We are focused on creating a future of abundance for everyone. Uh, we're not bystanders. We think this is an absolutely critical time in human history. You're going to hear me talk about that a lot. I think you're going to hear it from a bunch of people. Uh, and we really try to leverage these exponential technologies to help address humanity's grand challenges. We also try to lead by example. You know, we think that this is a time where the world needs a new story. It needs another vision for what the world could be. Right? It's the answer of what we're going through right now is not the answer. And so how can we help people see what it could be and then hopefully work hard to get there? We're also now a growing global community. We're focused on inclusion, collaboration, and deep connections. And we've now got over 100,000 members around the world, which is really extraordinary. Many of whom are here, uh, many of whom who can't be here are watching uh, online on our, on our live stream. Uh, it's an incredible community, and I hope you have an opportunity to engage with them. We also think big, you know, dreaming up moonshots to solve problems that impact billions of people. And at our core, we believe in being exponential. You know, and for us, that means behaving with the benefit of others in mind and using the smartest and most powerful tools and technologies to solve the world's great problems. Because we think that is what the world needs right now. All right, so let's talk a little bit about why you're here. So I think it's likely because you have a sense that the world is changing pretty dramatically, right? And that the past and present are not going to be uh, representative of what the future is going to hold for us. I think some of you are probably nervous about that, but I'm guessing that more of you in this room especially are pretty excited about it. You know, you view this as a time to thrive. I think you view this as a time to reinvent yourself, to reinvent your company, to potentially reinvent the world. At SU, we really believe that this is a tremendous opportunity. You know, we all get to together reimagine what the future looks like. You know, what is possible? And we don't want to gloss over the fact that this is going to be hard. You know, this is going to be an intense period for humanity over the coming couple decades. The world has never gone through so much change in such a compressed period of time, right? There's no roadmap for this. But obviously, it's critically important that we figure it out. I think so many of the people in this room are here because they want to figure that out. I think it's also important to pause for a minute and think about, you know, what hasn't worked, right? Think about what are some of the things that have gone wrong? What do we need to change? If we're going to survive, if we're going to thrive, we have to do things differently. So I have to say, I am incredibly encouraged and I'm incredibly optimistic. You know, I get to see people every day who are changing the world, uh, who are overcoming adversity, who through sheer force of will are moving themselves and this planet forward. And I'm super moved by that. Uh, Peter has a, a phrase he uses here where he says, what it used to take a government to do, now a company can do, and what it used to take a company to do, now an individual can do. You know, we have an opportunity now as individuals to have an outsized impact on the world and to help really direct where it's going. So this is why I'm here today. 
you know, for my love of being around the thinkers and doers like you all, for my desire to help move the world forward in a positive direction, uh, for the privilege, really, of getting to talk to audiences like you and help you understand kind of what is happening in the world and, and where we're going and how important it is to play a really active role in helping shape the future. So over these next three days, we're going to give you a ton to think about. There's lots of content. Uh, as an individual, I hope you'll think about how these new technologies are going to impact your life. You know, if you could work from anywhere, where are you going to live, right? If you don't have to work all the time, what are you going to be spending your time doing? You know, as the world changes so rapidly around you, how are you going to continue to grow as an individual? And if you're running a business, I hope you'll think about the inputs that affect your business. You know, what happens as they continue to double in capability and decrease in cost? What happens with two, three, four doublings? Like, what does your world look like then when you can potentially design, you know, sensors into everything, design pollution out of your products, when your supply chain has been radically shrunk? And I also hope you'll really think about how you as an individual or as a business can do well by doing good. You know, how do some of the changes that you're going to hear about over these next three days, how do they affect you? How do they affect your business? How do they affect the world? And how can we use that new knowledge and these new powers to move the world forward in a positive way? I think if we're successful over the next three days, you'll definitely be well on your way to embracing an abundant mindset and, and hopefully also becoming an exponential leader. I want to thank you all for being part of this community. Without you, obviously, uh, SU would, would not exist and would not have kind of the firepower and leverage that we have. Uh, and I also want to thank you for taking this moment really seriously. You know, I really do believe that this is an incredible time in history. It's incredibly exciting, but we have to pay attention uh, and we have to be working hard to, to create the future that we want, that we deserve, uh, and that future generations deserve as well. So with that, I want to say thank you and welcome to the Global Summit. Thank you.